we're very blessed to be able to see, we've seen the painting, the final painting. We know what the Return of the Witches, beautiful painting by Laurie Sweet looks like, but we get to now see how it emerged, how the painting in conversation with Laurie indicated how it wanted to be painted because Laurie took snaps of every single step of the way. So Laurie's going to lead us in a little slide show of yes. the creative experience of this painting. I think, I think the real painter was Jean, don't you? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yes, on many occasions, on many occasions, I've I've known I'm not in control. Uh, I'm, I am a midwife, and in a sense, and bringing through the images, but they the images do emerge. And often, when I'm working, I might go to sleep at that night, and in the morning, I wake up and I think, how did that happen? Like it, it, you know, it's kind of it works on itself. So it, it is a really mystical process, and I, I love it. Um, I love exploring it that way. But, and the other thing is, is to understand that a lot of people think that painters just paint a painting, that you just paint. And there are certain styles of painting. There are certain, and I even engage in some where you kind of put down a layer of thick paint and you're working fast and you, you can create a, a painting relatively quickly. But in these paintings, I often work in layers, multiple layers and they kind of build on each other. And there's a prayer process and, an, and a kind of a meditative process that goes along with it that kind of adds to the fact, and just like our lives, right? There's just these layers and layers. And, and over time, our ancestors and the generations and the layers and layers. So I think the creative process of making a painting this way also lend itself to this particular painting um, for healing, for sacred process, for honoring these women's lives and for understanding, you know, how we're all connected, how we're all connected in this process. And you're gonna see the underpainting. So, um, which is a big part of it. All right. And, and, the, and the other thing is, is the unseen, right? There's so much that goes on in our lives that are unseen. We're, when we call our mystic family or we call our ancestors, they're not maybe right here where we can see them physically, but, but they're here and there's so much happening and influencing us and guiding us in the unseen. And so there are unseen parts of this painting, they're underneath that you can't see, but they're still there and the magic and the energy of them are available to us, so. Let's go to the screen share here. Oop, I need I need enabled to screen share. Let's see. Oh, you're right. It's the because we're on a new one. Whoops. Yeah. Oh God. Okay. I just locked the meeting, but that's okay. It's screen share. I want to give you. Did I give it to you? Yeah. Let's okay. see. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Okay, are you seeing my desktop? Yep. Okie doke. And let's open this up. And we are going to start here. So what I'm showing you here is just the um, realization that it takes a couple, a little bit of time to come up with um, a composition. And we, Janet and I, uh, met and talked about some different elements that she wanted to have as part of this composition. Obviously, um, Joan was in there and her banner, her sword. Um, and we just talked about how we might be able to incorporate the 13 witches into the composition and represent each one of them. So we were just kind of exploring and these were a couple different versions. And this one, we have Joan kind of having her arms around them, right? Like, yeah, holding them, um, kind of looking over them. So these were just very quick sketches um, of how we might do that. 
this was one where we started to talk about the underlying geometry and structure um, and the Fibonacci and how that spiral is kind of part of all living things on the planet. Yeah. And, and this actually has Joan up here leading them, walking them into these trees that are kind of bent over like the Garden of Reverence and kind of coming into that. So this, this composition led to exp talking about the Garden of Reverence. And these are Janet's hands right here. Uh, and I used her hands as my reference <laughs> to create on this composition sketch, he, right here are her, her hands, right? So just thinking about those hands. And I actually had Joan holding the banner and the sword, but I ultimately ended up having her hands in the center here. So these were kind of the initial sketches. And then we discussed the size of the canvas, which we selected 16 by 20. And here's the sketch, here's Janet's hands. Here's my little dish of dirt from Take Back the Magic Intensive, my candle, um, crystal and some sage. And this is um, Janet's prayer, right? The uh, Janet, what do you call this again? The, uh, the, um, the female trinity, she who was. The female trinity, right, right, the female trinity. So this is what she wanted to have as the prayer on the canvas. And um, this is some dirt <laughs> that I used to, to bless the canvas as we began. And then I added the female trinity here onto the canvas. And uh, along that came uh, with along with that came uh, this symbol, the, the triple spiral uh, that kept just coming up and coming up. Uh, in my uh, intuition as I began this. So here we have the very beginning. And so that's underneath the whole painting. And then I just started to play, right? And here we have kind of this little DNA structure, right? And the heart and this kind of vine, viney energy, spiraling energy. This is another layer. Um, so again, these layers of just energy and my own prayers and just allowing inspiration to come through the painting. Lori, when I go back to that one, when I glance at it, just glance at it, right? And it's not my process, it's nothing I know. Look at our I see underneath on the right-hand side, underneath the orange spiral, there's a person. Mm-hmm. There's I, one I, here too. Right, but but I really see her on the, because she has mm -hmm. hair. I, and I feel like it's Jen entering the painting and saying, mm -hmm. okay, Lori, I'm ready to work with you. Yep, yeah. They do come and there are times I've had arguments, you know, we, <laughs> with my paintings or, you know, we have wonderful times together. So it's definitely relationship. And even when I teach uh, with, a, my students, it's about having relationship with the painting. It's not about dominating it. It's not about, you know, trying to control it. It really is, what do you need? How do I complete you? How do I serve you? How do I work with you? And how do we bring, you know, this into being I mean, from the unseen into the seen world? So, and, and this is something else I want to say, actually, Janet, I'm glad you brought this up because it's, I'm going to tell you what things mean to me. Janet might say what she sees, but uh, the beauty of art is there are these layers of story and that you might see something completely different. And even in the final painting, you, the symbols and images might mean something else to you. It's going to tap into part of your own personal story and part of your own, um, you know, personal healing journey. And so, you know, go with that because I, I love hearing all the different interpretations and, and visions that come out of the artwork and, uh, you're, you're never wrong to go with your own heart and your own intuition. So I started to get this very earthy, uh, the colors, Janet gave me some colors that she wanted to have in the painting. Um, and they were, they were kind of deep oranges and reds and browns and, and kind of these earthy. And then of 
course, the women are coming out of the dirt, out of the soil, out of, you know, the earth. And so I kept getting this like kind of earth energy, you know, mama is right here. And, um, and of course, and then here, I guess we could even say that's also right. Yeah, the garden of reverence, the gateway into the garden of reverence. So this image, I played with for a little while. She became very uh, many different colors, and um, then she got real deep, very rich, and kind of settled in. Like she felt just very ancient and primordial and present. And Joan's image then went over top of that. So I started to sketch the painting over top of that. I can't hear you, Janet. If you want to talk, you can unmute yourself. <laughs> I'm keeping myself muted because we're having some lovely rain, which is great, <laughs> but it might be noise on the- Sure. On the, so, but I do have a question. Do, is that like chalk? What, what material is the white sketch? Yeah, so this is just, yeah, this is just chalk. It's just a, it's a light pastel, white pastel. Uh, so you can wipe it off or, you know, whatever. But it um, just lends itself to putting it on. If I want to change the space, you know, space is something a little bit, I can move it around. So yeah, this is just the initial sketch by hand uh you know sometimes in artwork you can transfer images or project them this was hand this is just all hand sketched so. this is the same sketch only now i've moved to paint so now this is a white acrylic and again some people might work you know do all the background first and add the layers onto the painting in this particular case i did the whole sketch uh, and worked within the image. And this is blocking. So just beginning to block in the images. You can see Joan's face is much more masculine here, right? It's, it's like a harder edged um, face. And you can also see that I made a mistake here. I misspelled down here in the banner. I left the eye off of the French. <laughs> but Joan, you know, had had my back and uh, we were able to correct that a little bit later. Now here's where I started to add um, some texture. This is actually some acrylic mediums. Um, it's like a gel texture, but I added uh, little pieces of gold flex and this is the dirt. Uh, some dirt from the earth and some ashes from the candles and um, some sage that I that I always burn as part of my prayer process. So all of this became embedded and I kind of put it around the women um, as rather than painting it in, it's actually textured. So, and this is a close up of some of that texture and the dirt right into the, canvas yeah and then this was kind of an up close yeah of janet's hands in my in my painting and more blocking and joan's face is starting to soften a little bit um this is what the texture looked like there on the canvas And then I started, I went one by one. Uh, I spent some time with each woman. And, and this is a, a picture of Marguerite. Um, and let's see, how do we say her last name? Porret? Is it Porret? So Porret. Mar Marguerite Porret. And um, I really resonated with her story, but with each of the 13 women, I would get to them. So uh, here, they're not done yet, but I started with Jezebel and each one as I went, I would stop and look up her story, read what Janet had sent me, look online to see what else I could find out about her. And so really I spent a, probably maybe I did two of them a day as I worked on the rest of the painting, but just taking my time to really get to know them 
and to um, figure out how to depict them in this little form <laughs> that they would have. So this is her book that she wrote, um, The Mirror of Simple Souls that she's holding. And here they all are now with all of their kind of fleshed out in their clothing and with their little symbols. Some of them have, uh, like this is the symbol from the Algerian flag. So um, just finding ways to try and, uh, and for Cherokee, you know, having a little bit of a native type uh, dress here so that we had a, a sense of each woman and her unique story. And I mentioned, um, uh, in the previous uh, video, perhaps, I, I'm not sure if we recorded that or not, but here we, I used the oak to represent Jezebel. And um, in, the, in the Middle East and in Palestine, the oak was very sacred. And there was a reverence around the trees in general and how the trees are associated with saints. So Jezebel being our oldest, is holding all of that earth energy and tree energy and sacred um, energy of the earth beneath us. It was your decision to, I, I had in my mind the order that we're gonna do it in the novena, which is uh, beginning with Jezebel. And then the second week is Mary Magdalene. And so I, could only see it as that it would be uh, Jezebel first, that she would be the closest. And, and then I was so surprised to get a text from you saying, hey, are you okay with my reversing them? And yeah. I, I, you know, at first I just, I couldn't, I, I couldn't see that. And, but then I thought, well, you're the artist. So sure, whatever, whatever feels right. Well, now that I see it, it's, essential that they be in this order because of exactly what you said. The beginning of patriarchy, you can read it in all the various texts yeah. of all of the religions, but in particular in the original Hebrew Bible, Yahweh tells them, you cut down those trees. There will be no worshiping under the trees. And so it's perfect. Yeah that you start with the woman and, and the tree are one and the same. It's simply perfect, but it wasn't anything I could have imagined. Well, and when you talk about the class, the intensive and actually working through the intensive, it makes sense to start with the oldest and, and move forward in time because we tend to think of time that way. But yeah, in the painting, it was sort of like, if we're calling them back, if we're calling them probably you know, the one that's was in 1961 is still, you know, is first, right? She's going to come because she was the closest to come out. So this is the, and, and she's still living. She's still alive, right? I've asked, I, I, and I'm trying to research that. If, if okay. so, she'd, be a, she'd be a little bit older than I am, and I'm 72. So it's possible, but I, it's but I don't possible, know. It's possible, but don't know. Okay. I wasn't sure either. I meant to check that out. But anyway, yeah. So that's, and I think, and I didn't even know what you just said about the trees, but yeah, that's a really great, uh, when this happened, this is what I mean. We're not in charge. Somehow the painting told me they need to go the other way around. Then we learn why. Why, exactly. <laughs> This is just an up close detail of the, the chain mail. <laughs> I, lo I love this. And that's why I'm wearing my chain mail in uh, Jen's honor oh. today. Um, it just felt like, well, I'll just yeah. the chain mail here. Uh, it's not the and same years as armor. Ago, when, yeah, and when I was lived in San Francisco several years ago, I actually during while I was there, I met these two people who made chainmail, and I sat and made chainmail headpieces for a whole year. Yeah, I got so good I could just use the 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 pliers and pick up the you know pick up the rings and just you know almost like you're knitting. So uh, it's it's really that. wonderful. Yeah, so maybe that's why this is so perfect. I mean, you really. <laughs> you can feel it like moving on her body. Yeah, it was fun to do. So there's, and, and then I, this, these are just like kind of detail shots. Um, so the, the snakes 
head and of course the snake represents rebirth transformation the goddess yeah, the god, and the god. snake and the snake lives in the earth right the snake regenerates in the earth close up here of Joan's banner this is just a little angel I don't know I thought you know rather than just the lettering on the banner um I know usually there are more images on her banner but I at least wanted the little angel there So this is more, I started to color in the background. I started to add more uh, details for some depth in the background um, and bringing the trees out a little bit more, making the sword lighter, started to fill in the flowers, the butterflies. And I think the butterflies, Janet, that we didn't talk about that in the other video. So um, you mentioned that there was a story that the butterflies were around Joan a lot. Well, because you sent me a text and said, I just feel like I need to put some butterflies on this. And I wrote back and said, well, that's kind of interesting that you said that because all of the stories and there's a lot of documentation, not just people's assumptions like a, like a novel, but because there was an entire inquisition and people were um, um, interviewed, isn't the right word, deposed, over and over and over again. And then after she was murdered, her mother pushed to have a, a retraction. And so they did the whole thing again. There is a massive amount of documentation. And one of the many amazing things is that the people around her were shocked that as she's coming through to Orleans, to all of these towns that she freed, and it wouldn't have been summer, there were oh, yeah. white butterflies mm -hmm. surrounding her. And so they, they perceived that, they saw that as the presence of the divine saying, mm. this is our girl. So yeah, white butterflies, that's definitely and, Jen's. And they were white. And I want to bring your attention that there's five of them. Oh, thank you. No, I missed that. Yeah. The year, or the year of the body, right? We've got a five year here. So this is a little close up um, again. So you have this textured area uh, with the dirt in it, some of the gold specks, and then it was painted with earth tones. And then you might not be able to see it here or on the bigger picture, but when you see it in person, there uh, is actually a gold, uh, there are gold highlights on the peaks of the texture. Um, you know, that rises up from the canvas. So it has, you know, a, an earthy feel, but but I believed for me, the symbolism there was that there's gold in that dirt, right? <laughs> there's gold in there and in the lives of these women. So some highlights there. And this shows the um, side of the painting. So this is one of the newer type of canvases that ha is a wider um, stretch bar uh, that the canvas is wrapped onto so that um, Janet does not need to um, frame it. She could frame it, but this can be hung as it is uh, on the wall, but it has a decorative um, trim on the edge of the canvas. Um, to finish that off. And there she is. <laughs> there she is. There she is. And we didn't talk, um, I don't think we talked here in this video about the geometry here, but this is something that Janet and I talked about and it did make its way in and stayed there um, as sort of an underlying structure, right? Of all of creation of the universe. We know the Fibonacci um, sequence and the, the sacred spiral repeats itself over and over again in seashells and flowers and ferns and in our bodies. And it's just, it's just this underlying sacred geometry of creation and of the divine. And um, I saw this as a, the marriage also of kind of the masculine and feminine archetypes and energies, the spy, the organic spiral and the dirt and the, but that structure of geometry is there and we're all connected through it and by it. And um, it's, it's part, part and parcel 
Uh, well, and when you say that, okay, so you, when you say the word structure, suddenly my eyes shift and now I'm seeing the painting as, well, where's the structure? So we have the goddess, the ultimate symbol of the goddess, the snake on the left and the sword, which, you know, is always seen as this masculine. And then we have Yezu, the male name on the left, mm -hmm. and Maria, the feminine name on the right, there's this constant, you have the fleur de lis, which is the very elegant symbol, the very feminine symbol of the French on the bottom left, and the dauphins, the king of France's crown on the right. There's all of the, it's a song. It's, it's like yeah. the, the two parts, the male and the female chorus, you know, they're singing to one yeah. another. And I didn't see that until you used the word structure, and then my brain shifted into yeah. what structure show me the structure and then it pops so i think this is such a living painting and it has so much going on that sure. um it's just like great literature um mystical poetry you you revisit a prayer or a poem 10 times 20 times and it changes times, and it yeah it opens yeah. you it touches something you go oh 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 Oh, yeah. well, the yeah. painting has that kind of, there's so much mystical symbolism going on here and it's so alive. I mean, I, it was the holiest thing for me was to see that the female Trinity prayer, she who was, she who is, she who ever shall be, is the first thing on the canvas. So, yeah. so she, she who is, she who was, she who ever shall be, is, is coming through right. and communicating with the viewer uh, in whatever way the viewer is ready to receive it. Is ready to yeah. receive it, yeah. Yeah, and I think that the paintings do. I mean, I know even paintings I've made, I look at later and they mean something different to me. Or I've had people write to me and say, even from my classes, they may have made their own work of art, like uh, like a sacred collage image. And I had a woman write to me about 10 years later who said she was working on her thesis or something. And she pulled that uh, one of her collages out that she never really understood what it meant to begin with. And now 10 years later, she looked at it and she knew like, just like downloaded information relevant to the paper she was working on her thesis project. So yeah, I think they're, they speak to us at different times. Um, we might notice different images, something might come forward, you know, that we need in that moment. And that's why it's so important to let the artwork speak to you um personally right you can hear what it means to me and janet but it's also important to to let each person kind of see what what am i experiencing so what i'm seeing that we haven't talked about is that i'm going to use the word staff that the the base of her banner i am deep in reading slowly 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 max dashu's witches and pagans because it's so much information in there and I think it was just yesterday I was reading about the staff, that this is one of the great symbols of a sacred woman, that she yeah. would have her staff. Now you had said, I don't know why, but I just put this, this triple trinity right at the top. But my eyes are now looking at, it's almost like ruin language, R-U-N-E. Do you mm -hmm. have any sense of what inspired you to do those like carvings in her banner? Yeah, I I mean, that's just part of, you mean in the staff? Yeah, I, the yeah. staff was definitely, um, it, it, it felt really important to me. So, I mean, even though I painted them, I don't always know exactly why right. myself until later. But, um, and you're even filling in some of the pieces now, but the staff, I knew that it wasn't just supposed to be like a black pole with the banner on it. Like yeah. it was in and of itself a character in the painting too. Like the staff had its own story and that, that it was part of the banner, but it was its own thing. So I don't think that while I was painting it, I had, I spent a lot of time trying to analyze that or, or figure that out or even talk to it. But now that you're saying it um, and pointing it out, um, it felt like it it needed recognized in its own way and that it had its own purpose. It wasn't just a pole. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
And that's a language, that's a mystical language that you've carved into it that's not interpretable. This isn't go open right. a book and look these symbols up, but they really caught my eye. I can't wait to live with this painting. <laughs> they really caught my eye as, ooh, a story, a story. Yeah. Because every one of these 13 women were going to hear their story. So what's the story of the sword? What's the story of the crown? What's the story of these sacred words, je ne pas pu, I am not afraid. What's the story? There's, there's, this is just, Ma how many stories are, are on this yeah. painting? And it will be yeah. uh, with me throughout the entire novena. So she yeah. will be, I'll be creating an altar for the 13 witches. Um, and the painting is the central uh, life force <laughs> yeah. on the altar. I am so grateful that you made this slideshow because it is spectacular yeah. to see the final painting. It totally is. We could have hours of conversation about every the sword and the crown and the butterflies and the 13 women but to see how prayerfully I, and I adore the fact that there's dirt and ash and because one of the great crimes committed against these women is that they were never buried and in my in our modern world we're like yeah you know a lot of people get cremated and tossed in the ocean anyway. We are not as concerned or aware of the sacred nature of a mm -hmm. cemetery, of a, 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 a tombstone. Right. However, right. in this 3,000 years of history, the worst, worse than being murdered was not being buried in consecrated ground. Mm -hmm. And so the culmination of this ceremony will be that we put their stories and we put their prayer, our prayers for them into a little bowl of dirt. And in the closing ceremony, we bury them in yeah. consecrated ground. So of course you put dirt and ashes and gold <laughs> on the painting. So, yeah. Glorious. So that, that's wonderful. And, and now that you're saying that, so when I paint, sometimes when I paint, I get a series of other paintings when I'm working on a commission or working on any painting. Sometimes in the process, I get smaller paintings that I call guardian paintings. They feel like they're related to the painting, but they're their own painting. And sometimes they'll like sit in front of it, like for a night or two, like they, it, it, it feels, I don't know. I just call them guardian paintings. And, um, I only have one of them laying here, but uh, there were uh, three of them so far that came through in my dreams while I was making this painting. So stop the share so that when you talk, we can oh, okay. actually see, because right now you're just a little square. Okay. Oh, I want to see the guardian painting. And so this was a guardian painting and she has two, and there's stone, there's gravestones. Stone. And they're on this red thread, right? They're on this red path. And these were like the ancestors, you know, or the, or maybe the women, but, and then there's this kind of central figure, which could be Joan, could be the goddess, could be one of us calling them back. I don't know. And, but in all three of the ones, there were, there were these little shapes that I, the only thing I could think they were, were little tombstones. So it was like honoring their death. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, which with John would be 14. So yeah. may, may I, you know, when we do the mystic family call, which is one of the many. And I, I think you saw this, didn't you? Cause you, you showed it to I me, you texted it to me. Yeah. But if I may, I'd like to you know, put, have it shown while we're saying the mystic family call. Oh, that's it. Yeah. I am a daughter in an old and sacred family of mystic wish, witches. Yeah. There they are praying in the thresholds between worlds. They call, I listen, I call, whoo -hoo, they come. They come. I mean, that's yeah. illustrated. I know an artist loathes hearing sure. that term. Um, no, that's... Yeah, you encapsulated the, the power of the mystic family call. So yeah, be great. yeah, I love it. Well, I love the way that you just explained the, the the stones there. You know, the honoring their death, right? Burying them in a in an honorable way, like in, in a, a way consecrated, yeah. sacred, yeah. sacred way. Yeah, um, they didn't want 
anybody to be worshiping Zhen because they knew they knew who they were murdering. Um, so they demanded that her body be thrown in the Seine River or Seine, I don't know how it's correctly pronounced. And the story I've heard is that they couldn't get her heart to burn. They kept dumping flammables and they could not get her heart to burn. Wow. So they threw everything in the Seine so there would be no place where people could come and um, worship for her. So we're creating the place. It's That's right. right here in the return of everywhere. The Jean d'Arc <laughs> Novena. So I know everybody watching this is itchy to get to know you better, Lori, and to purchase your paintings, possibly uh, give you a commission, certainly purchase a print. So everybody right here, somewhere around this video will be all the information you need to connect with Lori Great. and to purchase a copy of a print of The Return of the Witches. Mm. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Love you so, Love you too. so much.